If your image of a football coach is of a tough guy with a permanent scowl on his face, then you haven't met Pete Carroll. He's the coach of the University of Southern California Trojans, one of the top college teams in the nation. He's also upbeat, optimistic, and seems to have a permanent smile on his face, and no wonder. He has the highest winning percentage of any active coach in Division I football. He took a once great college team that had been on a 20-year slump and turned it around, winning two national championships. If you're a football fan, you may already know all that. But tonight you'll see another side of Pete Carroll that you probably don't know. He's taken his coaching ability far beyond the football field to a place you might never expect. He's been called the Prince of L.A., and this is Pete Carroll's castle, the L.A. Coliseum. Home field to the University of Southern California Trojans. It's here where 93,000 loyal subjects bleed red and gold on Saturdays. A uniquely American ritual played out with more glitz, glamour, and pageantry than almost anywhere else in the country. This is how we like it. It's how we want it to be. I don't want any different than this. I want it as hyped and as, and as uh, big time as possible. And, and, and I want to show that we know how to deal with it and handle it and still play beautifully, you know? So. They played well enough on the day we were there with our cameras to beat up cross-country rival Ohio State. They did it with a stifling defense, despite some unusual distractions. During the game, when it was still undecided, one of your players was posing for a picture with Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> the governor stepped in. I heard he was there. I didn't get to see him. Uh, well, how do you turn down the governor? I mean, I, I got some power over him, but not that much. But it's during the game. Yeah, well, I didn't know that happened. Who did it? <laughs> <laughs> Make no mistake, it's that unconventional, laid-back California style that's part of Pete Carroll's success. He's produced three Heisman Trophy winners, 42 NFL players, and 30 All-Americans in just seven years. In the high-stakes, high-stress business of college football, where most coaches are screamers, perpetual drill sergeants forever in a bad mood, Pete Carroll says he's having the time of his life. One of your rivals, Charlie Weiss, the coach in Notre Dame, said on this program on 60 Minutes that all coaches are miserable. Are you miserable? No, I never have been miserable. I keep thinking day to day that something good is just about to happen. You know? and, and so I, I, that mentality, whether I'm in a game or coaching in the midst of, midst of a season, I don't know how to think otherwise. And that doesn't take you to misery. It did take him to another win in an 11-1 and season. People in this town seem to love you, Coach. I don't, well, I don't know. They, they like winning. This town loves champions, man. They always have it's a town of champions. Pete, Pete, Pete. Hey! Good job, Pete. Pete, Pete. Pete Carroll's been a champion at USC, but it wasn't always that way. He worked as an assistant coach for 17 years before a less than impressive, some have even called disastrous run as an NFL head coach. You said that you love the NFL? Sure. NFL didn't love you as, as no, best I can No, they didn't like me too much. He became head coach of the New York Jets in 1994. He was fired after one season. His reaction to losing his job? You know, I got fired at the Jets. I thought this is the best thing that ever happened to me. That was my first thought. You know. got fired and you, you thought that was I a good thing? I know how crazy that sounds, but that's what went through my mind, you know. And it's because I had three years left of my contract, too. You know, that has something to do with it. Carroll tried again with the New England Patriots in 1997. He got fired there after he took a Super Bowl contender straight to the basement in three seasons. People have characterized your tenure in the NFL as a failure. You buy that? Yeah, I, you know, I hate hearing that. I, I don't, that doesn't sit well with me at all. You know, they made the right decision for them, uh, but I didn't go out f thinking that I had failed. I was looking, let, let me go. Let's go to the next try. Let's go. Let's get this thing right. He didn't look back, and he didn't give up. Instead, he convinced the administration at USC to hire him as a college coach. Alumni and fans hated the idea. Yeah, I was kind of like that, you know, that big bomb that dropped here and, you know, when, I, when I arrived. You know, the, the, I guess the emails and the faxes and all that stuff were burning up the machines here. Here's one of those emails, Coach. <laughs> I just happen to have with me. Great. This is uh, an email sent to the LA Times. What was it about Pete Carroll that made you want to hire him for the head coaching job? Was it his complete lack of recruiting ties to the West Coast, his limited college coaching experience, his reputation for being soft on players, and not a good motivator? Isn't that a beautiful thing? 
<laughs> it's a beautiful thing. I love running into those guys. They come up, it's like their final confession now. You know, they, oh, coach, I was one of those guys that sent the facts. Oh, it's okay. It's all right. You know, you didn't know. I understand. <laughs> you know, how about Ray Mal Lucas going to touchdown? Yeah! At USC, Pete Carroll finally found his calling. His boyish, enthusiastic style that seemed too soft for the NFL has been a perfect fit with younger athletes. He's now one of the highest paid college football coaches in the country at an estimated $4 million a year. Carroll says one of the real secrets to his success can be found on the practice field. A great coach once said that the best players don't always win. The players that play the best do. That's why we work so hard. That's why we train so hard. That's why we focus so much on practicing better than anybody's ever practiced before. Better than anybody else has ever practiced before? That's, that's, that's the whole idea. You want to do things better than it's ever been done before, or don't you? Nice job. He makes practice as much like a real game as possible. That includes piping in fake crowd noise during a scrimmage, letting fans in the stands, and learning to stop for TV commercials. We have TV timeout, TV timeout. Unlike more traditional coaches, Coach Carroll doesn't tear down his players, he builds them up. That's great running, 13. God, that's a good looking play. Nice going. Great run, Mark. I like it. I like it. We did see him get tough on a player when a fight broke out. Come on, Christian, we don't ever do stuff like that. Never. We never do stuff like that. You're out of the football game. Bo, put your helmet down. God dog it. One of our players, you know, punched a guy, you know, trying to get him away from him. You know, I ripped his tail pretty good, but I needed to get right back to him and, and teach him what just happened, you know? We don't fight. Fighting is doesn't, it's nothing in this game. It is no, no aspect in this game. It's just not okay. Come on. That's what he calls a teachable moment. Boy, that's a good example. Take a mistake and learn from it. It's part of a philosophy he calls win forever. Win forever, what does that mean to you? It's about finding out how good you, you could become at something and then, and then making it come to life. Pete Carroll sees that as his life's work. Teach young people, not just ball players, to seize every opportunity and make the most of it. Jones, not three, one, two, three, Jones! That's why during football season and more often in the off season, this high-profile celebrity coach goes into some of the most violent neighborhoods in Los Angeles, recruiting not star athletes, but gang members, in an effort to end gang violence. He started these nighttime trips in 2006. There were nearly 300 gang-related murders in L.A. that year alone. The need was so obvious. Kids getting killed in the streets is just not okay. It's not all right. Two days after the Trojans beat Ohio State, he took us to Watts. Pete Carroll was reluctant to let us bring our cameras here because he didn't want the young people he met to think he was looking for publicity or exploiting them. He usually travels with no entourage, no security. This housing project is ruled by one of L.A.'s most notorious gangs, the Crips. Now you face a life without in the penitentiary. Gotta stop killing each other. Many of these young men have already spent years in prison for gang-related crimes. I did 10, what you did, seven? Seven and a half. Yeah, so we... It's here where Pete Carroll believes his skills as a motivator and teacher might really pay off. Just like he's taught football players from across the country to play as a team, Carroll's trying to teach bitter rivals they can live together without violence. You could quiet this thing down. Wouldn't that be that awesome if you did it? Think if you guys were the guys that did it here and you'd never been done before. While he was talking, police helicopters constantly flew overhead. They, they call it the ghetto bird. bird. The ghetto bird. The ghetto bird. They're used to those ghetto birds. They're not used to having someone like Pete Carroll give them his cell phone number. I'd be happy to do that, you know? Cool, Get your thank phone you. Out. Get your phone out. Sure. It's motivational. I mean, I met Pete Carroll and he said he, he would offer his services to me. He gave you a cell number. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, come on, man. <laughs> this was all happening at 1 a.m. in the middle of football season. Save somebody's life out here. Save some kid. Give that gift to their mom. Why, why do this? What's in it for Pete Carroll? I don't even care. The last thing I want to do is be trying to get something out of it. That's, not, that's nothing, I have no connection to that thought. None. Pete Carroll has given his own money and raised even more cash to fund a program where about 50 former gang members will take courses in conflict resolution and first aid. They're being trained to help stop violence in the tough neighborhoods. What did you build a home for, bro? Uh, let them know it's us. Protocol. What's up, guys? The night we went out with Carol, these men from the neighborhood asked him to talk to a group of boys they were working with. 
boys they said who badly needed some coaching. Nice to be out. How are you? Good. It's a hole. <laughs> Carroll is as as much at home with these boys as he is with his players. They straighten right up for the coach, pants and all. Change ain't easy, you know. The boys gave him a chilling reminder of what they're up against. So let everybody know we're gonna die one day, or we might go to jail. And come out of here, we might go to jail. When I go to sleep, I think I don't know why I think about myself being in the casket. Like I don't know why. It's like crazy. how old are you, man? Sixteen. To just say I'm gonna die or I'm going to jail and live with that. That's more likely to happen the longer you keep thinking that. That's why it's so important for us to go and, and create hope and to help people with their vision and to help them understand what they can become. People at home will listen to you and say, God bless him, but he's, he's naive to think you can okay. coach your way out of this problem. That's okay. I've run up across, the, uh, across that before. And, and it, people that think that, I just ask them, have that opinion. Just don't talk to anybody for, about it for a while. Just give us a chance. When he says us, he means the members of an organization he started called A Better L.A. P. Carroll brought together educators, politicians, former gang members, police officers, groups that have been working separately. Now they're all on the same team, working to stop gang violence. Sergeant Curtis Woodall, a 13-year veteran of the L.A. gang wars, was skeptical when Coach Carroll first got involved. I thought it was a joke, to be honest. Not anymore. He credits P. Carroll's group with helping to reduce the murder rate and changing the attitude of street heart and police officers. He's actually rejuvenated me as a police officer. He's actually given me hope. It sounds like you are drinking the Kool-Aid big time. Hey, look, as, as long as I can see kids who would not normally walk around here, maybe be at a crime scene under a sheet, I'm happy. And so are these boys. Look at the expressions on their faces as they watch their first USC practice. These are the boys P. Carroll met in the projects. He invited them here not to make football players out of them, but to show them a different and better world than the one they know. That's really cool you guys are here. P. Carroll moves easily between both his teams. To him, they're all just young men who need a coach. Each person holds so much power within themselves that needs to be let out. And, and sometimes they just need a little nudge, a little direction, a little support, a little coaching. And, uh, and you know, the greatest of things can happen. You believe that? No, I know that's true. I know that's true. I've seen it. I'm living it. 